goods at that. UP Baguio would be next. We have a question from UP Baguio. The, um, the moderator is Professor Javier. UP Baguio, please come in. We have a question from physics professor Al Garcia. Good afternoon, Dr. Ong. Good afternoon, UP. My question is, we do have extensive spectroscopic data regarding greenhouse gases, the so-called greenhouse gases, as to their, for instance, optical response to different types of radiation like infrared. Can we not use this to substantiate or falsify if indeed the level of carbon dioxide causes global temperature change? I, I think uh, there is no doubt that temperature have increased by about 0 0.5 degrees in the last 100 years. Carbon uh, emissions have increased from 280 to about 380. But the thing is, is there a link between that increase? No? And people tend to oversimplify by saying that the carbon dioxide increase is causing the temperature to increase. Mm. But as I've said in my presentation, there are other factors that we are still unaware of and have not considered in the equation. I, I liken the, the, it's as if we have an equation of uh, delta T or change in temperature is equals to A plus B plus C plus D plus E up to Z. And Z is increasing carbon dioxide content. Yet A, B, C, D, and E and so forth and so on we have no idea what their contributions are, so we one by one eliminated all these variables, leaving with Z as the only remaining standing variable, and conclude that A, delta T, or change in temperature, is caused by increasing carbon dioxide, forgetting that it's part of a bigger equation. Mm -hmm. So I think, and the data that you mentioned, spectro spectroscopic data, I think we should look at that and, and arrive at our own conclusions. Yeah, Professor Lampai, would you like to respond? Um, lessons from Earth history have taught us that uh, increases in carbon dioxide, especially evidence from uh, fossils and uh, rocks of the Cretaceous, have led to quite a uh, high degree of warming. And so I think uh, that's where people are coming from, uh, that increases in carbon dioxide will indeed cause uh, warming. All right, we have a question from UP Los Baños. Uh, the moderator is Dr. Maria Victoria Espaldon. You Pilos Banos, please come in. Good afternoon. Uh, there's a question here from a um, BS biology student. Um, he's a, she's a bit shy, so I'm going to read the question. A lot of <laughs> students are well aware of the problems, environmental problems. Are there any programs informing the masses about these problems other than TV advertisements? I think it would be nice if we can uh, hear a response from Dr. Lansigan, who is just <laughs> seated beside you. Okay, uh, thank, thank you, Professor Lacanzad. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, there are actually approaches on how you know, to increase awareness on the masses. And in fact, this being uh, exemplified in Albay, where you, uh, where you sensitize and also you uh, educate all the stakeholders, including the masses at the barangay level. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this month we are undergoing, a we'll be conducting a training course for trainers on uh, climate change issues and trying to incorporate them uh, as far as uh, local planning and also in the curricula at the elementary, secondary, and uh, tertiary level. So there are ways, and uh, everybody is welcome to contribute. Yeah, of course, uh, creating awareness. But my worry is, what information are we going to give the people? Uh, if, if we are to promote a science-based uh, education program, then uh, we should be careful in, in, in uh, making sure that the information we get out is sound, uh, based on sound science rather than based on alarmists. I think my, my concern is the alarmist uh, messages that are coming out are without sound science, scientific basis. Is there a question from our, the audience here in Diliman? Chancellor, go. I will actually react to uh, Dr. G. Uh, Carinos. Uh, ah, Carinos. Yeah, and, and, uh, because <laughs> okay. uh, the moderator asked yeah. uh, if uh, officials present here Thank can respond. Thank you very respond. much, sir. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> anyway, first on a lighter note, I would like to say that we should have had this lecture 
uh, before the search uh, process for the chancellor was held uh, before <laughs> because uh, uh, when the search committee interviewed the, the two nominees, the first question asked by uh, Dr. Gomez, who was chair of the committee, was, what is the university's role in this matter of uh, global warming? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, huli na itong lecture na ito, no? Anyway, I would like to say that uh, uh, I think after the, uh, this uh, uh, series of lectures uh, uh, for the centennial, it is incumbent on the university to uh, put together uh, some of uh, the uh, issues uh, and concerns uh, and, and uh, maybe come up with how the university can respond and to, to these concerns and issues. And uh, the, uh, the researchers, for example, in the university can uh, propose uh, research programs uh, on how to address this. And I think that's really the plan of, of the university to put this uh, uh, together. And uh, for example, uh, in the, after the lecture on the poverty lecture, uh, there was already a small group uh, that was formed to uh, uh, study uh, social security system, how to improve the social security mm -hmm. system, which was uh, uh, exactly coming from uh, the, uh, the uh, issues that were raised during that, uh, that lecture. So what Professor Carino is saying is maybe we can challenge not just the uh, College of Forestry of, uh, of uh, uh, LB, but uh, uh, whenever, if, if we will come up with, uh, with uh, programs, it must be multidisciplinary. Uh, and and uh, I think the, the president will, will uh, in the end, uh, challenge the units to come up with, uh, with these projects. Uh, on uh, particular, particular to UP uh, uh, Diliman, uh, if we talk about uh, uh, a green country, maybe there should be first talk of a green campus. No? I think that's what uh, related to uh, Dr. Carillo's point. No? So when we talk about how do we address pollution, maybe we should also begin talking about addressing uh, pollution in the campus itself. Uh, uh, in, in the last uh, uh, millennial, uh, uh, there was this uh, uh, millennial storm more than 1,000 uh, trees were felled no, in, in, in the campus. So we, how do we begin to, to plant trees again to, to replace it? So uh, I think there, must, there is a need for uh, a comprehensive campus development and preservation plan. And that's exactly, we are beginning to, to come up with this idea of uh, imagining what the campus will look like in the next 100 years. No? Because we have not been very, uh, careful about our use of uh, space in the campus. There are concerns about waste disposal and management, uh, air pollution, uh, traffic, uh, and we must, uh, we must set parameters for the campus so that uh, we will not have a campus in the next 100 years which is, uh, you know, not very nice to look at. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Chancellor Kao. We are looking forward to be part of the planning for the campus. UP Mindanao is next. Um, UP Mindanao, please come in. Of the Foundation for the Philippine Environment, Mindanao. The question is, how can we translate highly technical studies to influence the MASA? What are your recommendations to influence policy and practice? Um, I think uh, because the uh, youth of today who are going to be the recipients of uh, uh, what has happened of this particular problem, I think we should start with the youth because they're going to be the ones who can probably mitigate and to a certain extent lessen the effects of uh, global warming on future generations. But what we, we should all start today. Given that the youth is key to all of this, I think that's the reason probably why Al Gore and whoever sponsored that film uh, did a film on uh, global warming because as you can see, it has been quite effective mm. despite the faults uh, that Dr. Ong has, uh, has introduced earlier. Despite all of that, it has increased awareness. And so I think uh, media has a lot, uh, is, has a big role in this, but always backed up by, uh, by sound science. Uh, the College of Mass Communications and other uh, units of the university should, should really look into this. But uh, 
I'd like to sort of digress to what uh, Dr. David Gross mentioned, if you remember in his lecture. With the defeat of communism in, the, in 1989, the only economic system that survived is capitalism. And capitalism is designed for growth. You know? So, uh, and, and he was challenging us to think about alternate, alternate, alternate economic systems that is not so dependent on, on, on growth, you know, economic growth, because uh, that's what's driving all this uh, consumerism, all of this uh, uh, demands on resources that, that's going to break one, sooner than later. You know? So I think that's a continuing challenge that we should all like, look into. Yeah. All right, we have a question from Baguio. Professor Javier, please come in. Our question is from BA Com student Charlie Ann Urcia. Okay. Uh, there are two very opposing views on global warming, and it's very confusing. Yes, the bottom line is to take care of the environment. But with the global warming hype, it's very alarming and caused so much paranoia. What is the real inconvenient truth that we can actually tell our families and friends to educate them about global warming? I think that the, the point is we should be, uh, as, as uh, part of the university, our role is, as I've said, to be critical of the things that, that comes our way. Because uh, if we don't do that, again, going back to what Dr. De Jos, Dean De Jos mentioned, our role in, in ensuring a secular morality, no? no sacred cows, everything should be scrutinized, everything should be looked at critically. I think if there's any contribution that we will make, whether it's for or against any issue, the role of being critical is what's more uh, paramount for everybody as part of this university. We have a question from UP Iloilo. UP Iloilo. The question is from Stuart Paul Torre, third year BA history student. Good afternoon. Uh, in the light of these environmental problems, don't you think the Philippine government should not have passed the, the mining law and welcome investors for coal-fired power plants? Thank you, UP Iloilo, for the question. Can we have a response from our speakers? I think uh, it's a bit late about the Philippine Mining Act. It has been passed in 1995 and, been, and, been, and had been affirmed by the Supreme Court in about 19, uh, 2004 that it's uh, legal, it's, it's constitutional. Uh, while, uh, while I am for the protection of the environment, it, it's not a, uh, an end all thing. No? Uh, we, should, we should look at it uh, in the light of sustainable development. I think that the one thing wrong about mining is that in the past it had created a lot more problem and, and the promises that it, 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 it made were not delivered. But on the other hand, the goods that mining had produced is, uh, is, is so important to society that without it we will all not be here in this room the microphone I'm holding, the, the eyeglasses I'm using, the computers, these are all for mining. So if we're, if we're saying that we're absolutely against mining, then we should all take off our clothes. Because the clothes we, we wore are weaved by machines that were mined. So you cannot take an absolute position against mining. I think that the, the more responsible position to take is to ensure that mining, that the, the damage that mining usually causes are reduced if not totally prevented and, 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 and the benefits that it promised in the past should be delivered particularly to the communities where uh, mining had happened. 